everyone. This is Mark Maritato, military historical artist. Thank you for joining me once again for part six of this continuation of a painting commission that I am working on. It is Colonel Haldimand S. Putnam of the 7th New Hampshire Infantry at the Battle of Fort Wagner, South Carolina, fought on July 18th, 1863. This is the second assault that was made on the fort where Colonel Putnam, acting as a brevet brigadier commander, led his regiments into the battle where he was ultimately killed. If you're interested in learning more about the history of this painting as well as what inspired it, please check out part one of this video which is located in the Fort Wagner oil painting time lapse playlist on our channel. And folks, if you wouldn't mind please giving the video a like, subscribing to the channel, hitting the bell notification, and also leaving us a comment that would go a long way to helping us bring more of this art creation content to you. Thank you very much for watching. We really, really do appreciate it. Yeah, so at this point, you're just seeing me noodle on a lot of the smaller details. What I'm working on here are the Union warships that bombarded the fort sitting just off the coast of Morris Island, South Carolina. Morris Island was the was the island that the fort was located on. Uh, the fort was pretty much right on the beach between the beach and a swampy area. Quite a few days prior to this assault, it was preceded by a bombardment by Union warships uh, where they tried to soften up the intended target before sending uh, infantry brigades into to the assault. Unfortunately, that proved pretty much useless as a lot of the Confederate soldiers were able to take shelter within the fort and many of them didn't didn't suffer any casualties and the fort suffered pretty pretty minimal damage from the bombardment and the forces that were in the fort waiting for the Union assault were able to counterattack uh, pretty effectively uh, and able to throw back the first and second waves eventually. So what you're seeing me work on here is the flame coming out of the musket of the soldier in the right front foreground. He's actually covered up on my head here, but you'll see me work on him eventually. I'm working on the flame coming out of his musket, then I'll, you'll see me work on his musket, and then I'll be working on him. Um, really, really happy with how the flame is starting to look on, on this. Just a little hint for you oil painters out there um, to get a flame like this uh, it really helps to use a color called Indian yellow which is a beautiful yellow color that when you mix it with white it just becomes magical with how it depicts things like flames or fire or sunsets it, it really is a beautiful beautiful color and it works really well in a scene like this where you're trying to show flame from a musket lighting up the scene a lot of the objects and you know things like the dead soldiers that are on the ground you're going to see me work on them a little bit here but as the painting progresses more in future videos you're going to see me work on a lot more of the orangey highlights that come from the 
flame that's shooting out of this musket that basically is going to be one of the um, sources of light that lights up the scene. Because remember, this is a nighttime scene, so anything that is emitting light is going to be used to light up this scene. So anything shooting out a red flame is going to shoot a red light or throw a red light on to people and objects all around because again at nighttime there is no light. The only light that is around is coming from what's emitting light which would in this case would be the flames of muskets or uh, any kind of any kind of artillery going off like say if a shell was exploding or anything like that. Uh, very very little light would be penetrating from any other source other than these sources. So what I'm trying to achieve with this painting is to show the glowing light sources coming from the muskets that are being fired in all different directions in this battle. So as you see here, I'm working on the infield rifled musket of a Union soldier in the right foreground. Working on things like small arms and musketry can be fun, but can also be pretty challenging because you have to work in a lot of small details. And you're going to see me go over and over again on certain areas to try to get the details right. And a lot of times, you know, you don't get to usually finish a lot of the details just in one sitting. Sometimes you have to paint one round and then let the painting dry and then go over it again with another round of detail in order to get it to look correct. So what you're seeing here is basically the first round of detail that I'm laying down in order to get this musket looking right. The other challenge too is that something like a musket is made of wood and metal and with metal you have to try to uh, credibly depict it in its environment so that it looks convincing. Now the, the rule of thumb with metal is metal will usually reflect the light that is coming from the direction of its light source. So if you're, if you're holding a metal object and say the sun is directly above you, well the brightest and shiniest part of that metal is going to be facing in the direction of that light source. In a nighttime scene like this, where you have light coming from different directions with muskets going off and so forth, this is going to offer a little bit of a challenge because there's going to be musket fire in all different directions around the soldiers throwing off light here and there. And you're also going to have a little bit of a cool reflection from the nighttime light, whatever the nighttime ambient light is. So if there is any kind of light around, some of that will be reflected in the metal. So so when you're working on something like this, usually it will take a couple of passes to get it to look correct. You're going to see me actually start working on the soldier here. Now here's where doing the underpainting pays off because as I'm working on this soldier, it is very, very easy to build off of what I painted underneath it. It just starts to come to life as, as I'm painting it. And you'll see that happen as I'm working on the details of the soldier's hat, the details of the soldier's face. It just starts to come out from the darkness. In future videos, you're gonna see me work on them even more and more, but eventually you're going to see the soldier just come to life from the darkness. In the previous videos where you saw me laying down colors in an underpainting which laid the foundation for what I am now doing, which is coming back and layering more colors on top of those previously applied layers of color.
we're getting to the point in the painting where as an artist, I'm really starting to see my vision start to come together. And so far I'm really, really pleased with the result. I was a little nervous and um, maybe a little bit anxious about doing a nighttime scene and how I was going to approach it and how it was gonna eventually look. But so far, it looks like everything is falling into place exactly the way I had planned it. And I believe that um, the client is going to be very, very happy once he sees the original painting. Um, unfortunately, the video is not giving this painting the justice it probably deserves. The colors aren't showing as accurately or as true to what they look like in person, which is basically true of any kind of um, original artwork that is photographed for a video like this or is, you know, quickly photographed. Usually the colors don't come out exactly as they look in real life. but. All, with that being said, I'm, I'm really, really happy with how this is starting to come out and, you know, I think it's going to be probably one of my better pieces as far as the body of work that I have thus far done and, um, you know, I think I'll be proud of this piece once I'm finished, so really, really happy about that. So here I'm working on some of the reflected lighting that's coming off of the musket flash from the barrel of the rifle of the foreground soldier. I'm reinforcing a lot of the lights that are coming off of that musket. And I'm gonna do more of this in future videos. So eventually you're gonna see this whole frontal area just be glowing from that orange light. Okay, so now we get to the most challenging part of this particular session, which is the sword. So this sword right here, Colonel Haldeman's sword, is the entire reason why this painting is being done. The client who is commissioning this painting now owns this particular sword. Uh, this was the sword that 
Putnam had with him at the Battle of Fort Wagner, and it was the sword that he was killed with. The sword fell into Confederate hands and then was eventually later uh, returned to the family after the war. It is still in remarkably good con condition and recently had sold to my client who wanted to tell the story of Haldem and Putnam and honor the memory of him being an unsung, really not very well known hero in the Civil War you know, with a painting. So he wanted to have this painting done and have it displayed with the sword that is now in his collection, which is now why I am working on this, which is a huge, huge honor. So, you know, he provided me with photos of the sword and one of the big challenges is um, I have to get the curve of the sword just right and you're gonna see me paint the sword in and then you're gonna see me paint it out and you're gonna see me paint it again. And that's all in the effort to try to get the correct um, curve of this sword. Um, sometimes you don't get it in the first take and sometimes you have to redo, you know, that's the whole challenge of working with things like weapons is you have to uh, try to depict them, you know, as accurately as possible. And again, as with the musket uh, that I worked on previously, what it's going to entail here is I'm going to have to work on this in one pass and then let it dry and then work on it again in another pass and fix up all the little details that need to be fixed once the paint in this area dries. Because if you just keep trying to paint wet oil paint over wet oil paint, you're just not going to get the detail that you want to get. Uh, you have to let the oil paint dry and then go over it again and then you start really really getting some nice effects with the metal and everything. But again you're going to see me paint the sword out, you're going to see me paint the background around it a little bit to try to fix the curve and try to try to make this blade as correct as possible. working with a really really small brush here for these really really small details. Uh, one interesting little detail about this sword is it had a little eagle head on it with uh, ruby red eyes and a very very um, elaborately uh, inscribed scabbard so those are some of the details that I have to make sure that I include in this painting.
So after working on the sword for quite a bit of time, I decided to stop working on the sword and move on to working on other parts of Colonel Haldeman Putnam. Um, I was starting to fight the wet oil paint and as I had mentioned previously with, the, with small arms and getting details on things like that correct, a lot of times you have to work in um, sessions or work in layers. So you work in one layer, let the paint dry, work in another layer, let the paint dry, work in another layer, and then eventually you get the effect that you want. So I'm gonna have to let the sword dry and then come back and work on it again in order to make the corrections and uh, add the detail that I need to get it to look the way that I want it to look. So as you can see with these other areas of Colonel Putnam, uh, these are areas that I had painted previously, and now that I'm coming back and adding detail, these areas of detail are now starting to pop more because um, I'm painting over areas that I had already painted. This is where you start seeing the magic happen, where um, detail starts popping from previous uh, rounds of underpainting.
Okay, folks, we're coming to the end of this video. If you wouldn't mind, please giving the video a like. Consider subscribing to the channel, hitting that notification button, or leaving us a comment would go a long way to helping us to bring more of this content to you. If you're interested in any artwork, please visit my website at meritato.com. We offer limited edition prints, open edition prints, and original artwork. Here is what the painting looks like after working on it this session. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.